John Key will accept the $51,000 a year annuity paid to former Prime Ministers and says the entitlement is not particularly generous compared with what overseas leaders get paid. The former PM is bowing out of political life tomorrow when he'll give his final speech in Parliament. And on the eve of that farewell, he spoke to our political editor, Jane Patterson, who began by asking him about Bill English's decision to raise the pension age, a decision Mr Key says he backs, despite refusing to do so while he was PM. It's 20 years out into the future, so it's a long way away. And um, I wasn't surprised. Um, I wasn't surprised by the, the steps that they took. And I just have enormous faith in Bill and Stephen as the finance team to, you know, to be balancing off the different competing objectives. I mean, it was right for me when I was there. Um, and even Bill wasn't proposing to raise it for 20 years, so it's not exactly like you know it's just changing dramatically overnight. But um, probably it's sensible, I think, to to um, give people an indication of you know, later on down the track that it's going to go up. Did you take any implied criticism from his move so quickly to address superannuation? No, I think you know you have to do some things that are a little bit different. I mean, so as I said, you need continuity, but you need change. And if everything's just exactly the same, then I think people go, well, what was the change all about? Um, and Bill's always going to be a bit different from me, and that's actually a really positive thing because I kind of think, to me, it's like you know, uh, to give you a kind of golf analogy, you know, we're all playing the same game, but we play it with a slightly different style and a slightly different swing, and that's what politics is like, you know. The you know, he's 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 the prime minister of a national league government, and I was too, but it's always going to be a little bit different, um, and we've happily cohabitated with quite different views on lots of things over the years, particularly probably in social areas more than economically we've been you know, very much joined at the hip. Um, but, but there's a space for all of that in, in an MMP environment, in the MMP parliament. So what will you do with the Prime Minister's annuity that you get, the $51,000 a year? Um, I don't know really. I'm going to take it. Um, I'm not taking anything else. I've kind of, I never have really taken the cars and all those different things. Um, look, inevitably, um, I'll, I'll yeah, either have some expenses or I'll make some donations and things over time. But I don't have a set plan for it at the moment. Do you think prime ministers and governors general and other dignitaries should continue to get these payments into the future once their their term has finished? Um, I don't say this purely as a matter of self-interest, but I think there's actually an argument that we're not that generous. So if you look around the world, um, John Howard has an office, he has staff, um, he still to this day has a driver and some sort of protection. Um, that's true in Canada, it's actually true everywhere else. Um, now, you know, it's obviously going to be different in a smaller country somewhere, but in a place like New Zealand, which is you know, a first world developed economy, um, one of the issues is, you know, just it's different for Helen Clark because she's gone off to the UN and she's got a whole infrastructure around her. But I'm now in a position where I don't have, you know, I don't have infrastructure, I'm going to have even less as of tomorrow. And that's okay, except you know, I am going to have to hire someone because there's just so many people that want to email me or talk to me or make appointments or whatever it might be. So, um, look, there'll always be some people that say, ah, oh, these guys don't deserve anything. But, but the truth is that, you know, if you came into politics for the money, you're really coming in for the wrong reasons. And I don't think many politicians do. What are your plans now? Um, this year is going to be reasonably quiet-ish. You know, it's probably not what Rona would say right at the moment. She's so been busy and she thought it would be. But the reality is that, yeah, I'll do some international speeches. I'm doing a few bits and pieces. Um, but I'm going to go on a few boards. And what I've been doing so far is just sitting down with everyone that wants to talk to me. And it's been both internationally and locally. And at some point, I'm going to distill that down. But I'm probably not going to start on any board until at least the end of this year. One of the questions I get asked the most is, why did John Key lead, really leave? Lead, I know. Yeah, I had Anything to, else I had you to want shatter share? everyone's <laughs> illusion. I know. I'm sure Nicky Hague will have a view on that tonight. But no, look, there is no, there is no scandals. I mean, I think I often say to people, well, look, what's unusual about it is that no one does it. No, no, it's a, no, it was a really hard call. I mean, I really sat there for about a year thinking long and hard, and sometimes I'd say, yep, no, I'm definitely going to do it. And then two weeks later, I'd think, mm, maybe I shouldn't do this. And I could have only done it if Nationals' numbers were high and my numbers were high, and it didn't look like I was, you know, a hospital passed the bill. But I kind of felt, you know, a decade as the leader was about right, 
and I'd done everything. I'd been everywhere from the Security Council to every APEC you can imagine. And I just sort of felt, oh, I don't know whether it's just going to look like I'm sort of hanging on because I want the job rather than I feel like I can, you know, make a difference now. What are you most proud of as Prime Minister? Um, two things, I think, really. One was the economic performance. You know, I think you can get into an individual particular policy, but, but ultimately, I reckon most people want to be independent of the state. Um, they want to provide for their own family. They want security, um, and they want to feel as though they've got a confidence about um, their family. And a strong economy lets them do that. You know, it lets them you know, get over time or get a job or whatever it might be. So for us, I think the economic performances over the last um, decade were really important. I think the other thing was that we really got it right when it came to Christchurch. I think you can always look at individual things, but um, overall. Um, there's a reason Christchurch has voted national so strongly post the election. I think there's just a general understanding on the ground there that you know, while not everything is perfect overall, we did a pretty, pretty darn good job. I think we were quite good at responding to those natural disasters, whether they were Kaikoura or, or a Pike River mine disaster. That's John Key, who is making his final speech to Parliament tomorrow, talking to our political editor, Jane Patterson.